Hi all, this is just an update to a previous video I did. Um, so, last time I talked about this, uh, I was going to build a, uh, a switch circuit for uh, for the power supply that I'm making. Um, and here it is on the breadboard. Uh, there's basically two circuits. This is uh, the, the top section of the breadboard, is this one. Um, and the bottom one is the one that works with one switch. Uh, I'm not sure whether I still have that. Uh, I don't think I've got that uh, post-it note over there. Uh, but anyways, this one, uh, the other one is uh, has got one more section transistor that uh, uh, helps it to use just uh, just one switch. And um, here it is working. So as you can see, uh, those first two buttons are uh, connected to the top part of the breadboard, and this is the two-switch option. Uh, works just fine and the bottom one uh, uh, is just the one switch one it's a little bit iffy because it's on the breadboard so not everything uh, always makes contact but it will be better so um, once I built it up on the breadboard I had to make a couple of uh, adjustments um, so I stuck those uh, caps uh, in here Th those are on the second transistor uh, maybe I'll show here. Um, so those are here on the second transistor base. So um, what I found uh, in the original circuit, uh, as soon as I applied power to it, um, it latched on and it was basically in the, its default state was on. Um, I didn't want that because uh, after switching on the power supply, uh, I want this to be in off state. Um, so what I did, I just stuck this electrolytic cup uh, from base to ground and this basically grounds uh, on the first initial stage even if it latches on um, this will pull the uh, temporarily pull the base down to ground and basically uh, cut off this transistor completely um, which will in turn shut down this one and then it goes into shutdown state so as soon as the power is applied it's switched off it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't latch on like uh, like it used to without it. Maybe I can show it. So let's have a look at the top one. Bear with me, I've lost my. I've lost the camera. Okay, so right now, if I disconnect and connect uh, power, nothing happens, so it stays switched off. Uh, if I switch it on and I remove the power, connect it back on, it again stay switched off um, but if I remove this cap there you go so as soon as I disconnect power oh, strangely enough he doesn't want to do it now oh dear There we go. So it depends. It's it, basically I just had to touch a, a, a wire momentarily, and what it is, but uh, just minimal amounts of charge building up on the transistor. It's enough to initially switch it on, and because transistors do what they're supposed to do, they amplify the signal. So as soon as there is minimal amount of charge, even tiny bit, as soon as the switch is on, uh, that gets amplified for this one, and then even greater. By, uh, a meter base current goes through here, amplifies a little bit more, and it's just a loop and will basically start itself up. Um, it was sitting uh, like that for a while, and I think it just discharged, uh, that's why I couldn't get it in. But now, look, it's uh, it comes on every time, almost every time uh, I apply power. Uh, but as soon as this cup is in, let me just switch, stick it back in. So this was this way. So when this cap is in place, it, as I said before, it just pulls the base down to ground and uh, 
that's it. So the default, default state is off. It doesn't come on. Um, on the second circuit at the bottom, um, there is the second NPN transistor, uh, which is basically uh, connected here to the base. Maybe I'll just quickly draw it. So if you just ignore this, take the switches out completely, and there is a switch here and goes to a transistor those resistors are still there and the base goes uh, to here and this goes to here to the collector so and there's a resistor here sorry yeah that's about it uh, excuse the uh, quick draft uh, but it's basically this um, the last part is the same as in the previous video um, so yeah and there is a cap over here uh, to ground uh, which basically stops it from uh, it's being more manageable uh, without this cap it uh, oscillates really quickly now if I press it it's about twice a second to hertz so that's fine uh, it's just a one press to switch it on and back on uh, on and off uh, that's good enough it kind of feels okay so uh, that's what I'm gonna leave it with um, and yeah that's about it so I need to just build it up on a uh, on a strip board vero board or uh, whatever you want to call it um, one thing though what I did with uh, with a board um, I've, I've put uh, I've actually put on a computer uh, on this uh, little piece of software called uh, DIY LC which is uh, DIY layout creator uh, it's really handy because every time I get to put something out on a uh, on a breadboard on a on a matrix board like this those are by the way the horrible really cheapy ones but that's just what I had in uh, in the drawer um, I always get to a point where um, I make a mistake and whatnot this just made made it a lot easier um, so I've basically quickly created a uh, a layout, connected everything, then printed it out and just stuck it with some glue stick on, on top of the breadboard, uh, just some paper. It's not going to make a difference, but um, it makes it easy. Now I can just quickly build it up without even looking at the schematic, so I know what to what to put where and how to connect it. It helps to, uh, helps to avoid uh, mistakes, but yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to uh, build this up. Uh, get those uh, bits soldered in, uh, connect all the pads as, as necessary um, and test it on the board and see if that works. Okay, cheers!